Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover a very specific example of bringing in an existing track and then matching the tempo of the ruler to that track. Now, this does not involve time stretching, so we want to make sure that time stretching is off before we import our original track. So under song and then song setup, we want to make sure that stretch audio loops to song tempo is turned off. That way, the time stretch won't be automatically set to on or set to time stretch when we import our track into the project. Another way to do that is when you create the song, you can set that parameter under the song creation page. So let me just show you that. If I go to new song, right here, it says stretch audio loops to song tempo. If you're going to work with things where you really want to adapt to a track you're going to import, then you'd want to turn that off before you get started on the song. And even if you don't, it doesn't matter. You can always turn it off on the individual track after something's imported. So now I've got something prepared. This is one of our songs that we've worked on before. But in this case, I'm using it as an example to show what if you pull in something like this. It's a fixed tempo song, and we want to now match the timeline. This happens all the time if you're working with somebody who sends you in a track. They just send you a mix in, maybe on an MP3 file, and they want you to start to build or compose background track around more of a basic demo song. So if I look in the inspector, I just want to make sure that tempo is set correctly. It's set to follow. We don't want that. We'll just change that to don't follow and then close the inspector. I'm going to zoom in on the leading edge of this. And we'll see there's a little bit of extra space here. We don't want that. So I'm going to double click, go to the editor. And I'm just going to trim off this extra space on the front edge of this. As I've said before, you can override snap with the shift key. So we're just going to do that and just bring this right in here. Grab the edge drag, and I'm also holding on shift to override snapping. Just to make it smooth, I'll do a little bit of a fade there. And now, I'm done with the editor, so I'll just close that. We'll go and shift it back to where it's on one. And now let's listen to what we've got. All right, so right here, we've got the downbeat of three. So we need to effectively move three, bar three on the ruler over to here. So I'm gonna stretch that out to give myself a little bit of working room. And now the technique that I use is to drag across the tempo field. You could type in guesses, I suppose, into here. But if you drag here, then you can drag the tempo back and forth. Now, see, that's too coarse of resolution. I can't actually get it right in there. So if I add the shift modifier to that, I get a very nice, smooth ability to control that. So I just want to get it lined up right there. And then we'll check this. And one way to do that is to turn the metronome on and listen. Now, if you turn the metronome on, you don't hear anything. You might need click in playback checked in the metronome setup. Sounds pretty good. Let's just listen way out toward the end of the song. That's actually really, really close. If anything, it might be slightly off toward the end. It looks like the waveforms are coming in just a little bit ahead of the beat. So what you can also do is just check at visually at where your tempo is set, and you'll see that I've got a 104.95, which might be slightly off. If this was done on a computer, very good chance that that was set to an original tempo of 105. So in this situation, I might just type in 105 and then see how that works out to see if that's tight all the way through. Right, now we've got it perfectly aligned to the track. Okay, so once you've got the tempo set and figured out, there's one more step to complete this process. And we need to go to the audio event properties. So if we open the inspector, and then we click on this event. Right here are the audio event properties for the selected event. And you'll see that there's a parameter called file tempo. 
Now, if you just brought in a file, that file tempo could be either not set or it could be wrong. And now that we've figured out the tempo of that track is actually 105, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and transpose that value and just type it in here. So now that you've got the file tempo set to the actual tempo of the song, the reason that you want to do that is because then later on, if you actually invoke time stretching, this isn't drums, this would be sound, any tempo changes that you make will be picked up in that file. So say I set this to 120, it tracks right along, or I could set it much, much lower. So if file tempo is not set right though, that will not track along at all. So that's how you match the tempo of your song to the tempo of an existing imported track. This is particularly useful if that imported track has a fixed tempo. In the next example, we're going to go over how to create a tempo map from a freely played track, and that involves using the tempo track. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.